Hey guys, welcome to vlog number two. The World Series is finally back in Las Vegas after two long years. It's the most exciting time of the year for tournament poker players. You can win big, you can lose big. It tests your mental stamina, your physical endurance. Most of all, it's such a fun time for recreational players to come and live out their dream. I have a full slate of tournaments on the schedule for the next six or seven weeks, and I can't wait to take you along the journey with me. So let's just dive right in. The first event on the schedule is a $500, $5 million guaranteed reunion event, the very first weekend of the World Series. It didn't really feel real that the World Series was back in town until I was walking up those steps, going through those familiar doors, walking down the hallway with all the banners everywhere, leading to that feeling of excitement all at once. The line, it looked relatively short, but it took a total of two and a half hours to get through. I just took all the cash I had with me and bought into several weekend events. So when we come back for day 1C, we're walking in around 10 a.m. and the place is packed. They had already had about 7,000 players come on Friday and Saturday, so they were expecting a big day three, but it was huge. People everywhere, lines everywhere. It just seemed like chaos, but also a very friendly chaos. So in the first two hours of play, we win some small pots, we lose some small pots, nothing really too exciting hand-wise, but the table is having a great time. And as you can imagine in a field of some 13,000 players, there are some non-standard lines being taken at this table. For example, I open 9-7 suited in the cutoff, both blinds call, flop is jack-8-3 rainbow, and the small blind just leads for 8k. Not typical. On the first break, the re-entry line is already growing and the real hallway is a complete zoo. The World Series has officially started now. Woo! And the first major pot that we get involved in, we look down at ace king of clubs under the gun and raise it up to 2K. It folds around to the low jack who three bets to 5,500. When it falls back to us, we make the call for 3,500. You could definitely jam on this stack size, but sometimes I'll call the suited hands out of position because they play well enough. Uh, the flop is ace eight deuce with two clubs. So we absolutely smash this flop. We check it over to him, he bets 5K and with not that much more behind, we make the call knowing that we can get it in on either the turn or the river. The turn brings a four of diamonds. We check, low jack bets 6,500 this time. So it's a super small bet. And I'm worried that when he bets this small, he's gonna check back the river a lot. And especially if a club comes and he doesn't have a flush draw, I don't want to lose value. So this is where we pull the trigger. We jam all in for 23,000 total. He thinks for a second, makes the call and turns over ace queen offsuit. So we just have to fade two queens, which we do. The river is a nine of hearts and we scoop a pot to bring our stack to about 70K. In this next one, the blinds have gone up to 800, 1600, 1600 level. The under the gun player limps. The small blind completes and we look down at seven five of spades in the big blind. We check. So we're off to see a flop three ways. It comes down four of spades, three of clubs, deuce of spades. And we are doing cartwheels in our head. The small blind is this woman who has played very, very snug. She leads 3K. I just call, which I regret looking back, I'm just, I should just raise. If I was playing sharp, I would have just raised. But I just call the under the gun player who limped pre, takes a decent amount of time before making it 20,000. He is definitely a recreational player. He tried to bluff someone off a hand earlier when he didn't realize that he rivered a wheel. When people make it this big and they're not pros, it's like usually a sign of strength, but how strong is strong in his mind, I'm not sure. Some people limp aces and kings under the gun. I could see that being the case for him, which it's like I'm doing fine against those hands. Then he has sets. Maybe he does this sometimes with a flush draw, but I don't know. I was pretty surprised and thought that it was strong. I just didn't know if it didn't matter because my hand is also such a super strong draw. The small blind folds and I end up taking the aggressive route and just jamming all in for 64K. He snap calls and when he turns his hand over, we see the bad news. We're up against pocket deuces for bottom set. So that takes away some of our outs for the flush, but we can still hit an ace, a six, 
any spade that doesn't pair the board. So the turn brings the eight of clubs and the river is an eight of diamonds. So he boats up on the end and we are out of our very first World Series of Poker Tournament. So the next day we head back to the Rio for our second bracelet event. This time it's a $600 no limit hold'em deep stack event. We have main event champ Kui Win at our table. We also have actor James Wood sitting right to my right. So it's a very talkative table, very splashy, generally very friendly. In one hand, I pick up king five of diamonds, make a flush versus Kui and take down a medium sized pot. One of the bigger hands of the first few levels, I have ace king and chop versus another ace king. And then in this hand, Under the Gun 2, who we've been really friendly with so far, opens to 1400. We look down at Ace-9 offsuit in the big blind and defend. The flop is Ace-Jack-3 with two hearts and a club. Under the Gun 2 bets 1700 and we make the call. The turn brings a Queen of Clubs, so now there's two flush draws on board. Under the Gun 2 bets 2900 and we make the call yet again. The river brings the nine of spades, so now we make two pair. And Under the Gun 2 doesn't slow down, he bets 5600. So now he's gone three streets for about half pot each time. And I'm thinking to myself if I can get value or not from a worse ace X holding like ace king. I think that at these stakes, a lot of people will check back a hand like ace 10. He could have um, gone three streets with a hand like ace 10, but I don't think he'll call a raise on the river. I end up just calling and he snap mucks his card. So we don't get to see his hand. He was bluffing the whole way and we weren't missing out on any value here. All right, you guys, I'm not really excited about sharing this hand with you, but we're keeping it real here. You're gonna see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So here's one of the ugly, let's go. This hand button raises to 2K at 400, 800 big blind. I am in the small blind with ace, nine of spades and make the call. The big blind comes along as well. So three ways, the flop comes down, king, king, queen with one spade. The flop checks around. The turn is a four of spades. So we turn the nut flush draw. We check, big blind leads for 1400, which is a pretty small bet into a pot of 6,800. And then the button just calls. I think that they both have decently weak holdings unless somebody's getting super tricky. I just think they would bet bigger, bigger with a king and one of the two probably has a queen, maybe both. So I decide to raise. I raise it up to 6,500. Probably could go bigger. Yeah, my plan is to raise turn and fire river if um, just one person calls. Just the big blind calls, the button looks really irritated and folds his hand. The river is a blank. We don't get our flush. It's a deuce of diamonds. So we break out and the plan is firing again. Um, we're gonna have to put him all in and it's basically our most of our stack as well. So the plan is to go all in for about 20K. Even though that's the plan, my hand just checks. <laughs> I don't know if that's happened to any of you guys where it's like, you know what you're supposed to do and you just don't freaking do it. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I really um, think that this is just like one of those times where it's so exposed how uh, rusty I am since after taking a month break of poker that's not a good excuse like luckily this is only a 600 dollars event compared to all the other bracelets which are much bigger but this is just me um obviously dusting out the cobwebs because i just didn't pull the trigger my opponent snap checks back and turns over queen eight offsuit so the reunion event was a 30 minute level event so the next few levels go by without us picking up any hands we go pretty card dead and then we get ace king off and shove for our last nine blinds nobody calls we're down to our last five blinds and pick up ace five offsuit we jam from the low jack and big blind calls he has king nine of hearts we need a hold we need to beat king nine of hearts to double up and then maybe win a few more to get back in this tournament Flop comes 5-3-3 three, three rainbow, so it looks pretty safe. And the turn is of six of hearts, and everybody at the table is like, whoa, because he has a lot of outs now. And the river brings one of those outs. He hits the eight of hearts on the river. He was a flush to knock us out of our second tournament of the World Series. Today's event is the win $1,600, one million guarantee event. I'm feeling pumped. I am super energized. I had a ton of coffee this morning, but also I had Quite the pep talk with Jesse this morning. There's nothing that motivates you to play much better than reviewing these hands in a vlog format. Today, my plan is to 
turn up the aggression factor. If it's close, I'm gonna take the aggressive route. So you guys feel free to give me endless shit in the comments if these hands from the wind today are passive or are not really going for it enough, okay? It's that way, the next time I come here, it'll be reinforced in my brain a million fold that I just need to go for it, loosen up, go down in a blaze of glory rather than, you know, dwindling down and then praying to get some good hands. In this hand, I looked down at Jax under the gun and opened to 500. He is in the cutoff and makes it 1700. Folds back to me. I make the call. The flop is queen seven five with two diamonds. I check, he C bets 1500. We peel one off. The turn is a 10 of clubs. I check, he quickly checks back. The river is the ace of diamonds. Really, really did not want to see this card. Pretty much anything that I wasn't ahead of at this point has caught up. I check and just pray for a check back, but he bets something like 2,800 and I just fold. Um, if he's bluffing there, good for him. Um, but this card is just so, smacks him so hard. I just have to give him credit for a hand there. In this next hand, this guy uh, limps. He's been limping a lot and calling everything pre-flop. So one of those guys, he's on his second or third Goseki. So he's having a great time. The hijack who's been playing pretty solid makes it 700. I look down at two queens. I three bet to 2,500. Fold back to the limper who calls a three bet. No problem, 2,500, six it in. Then the hijack takes 0.2 seconds before making it a cool 9700. We have 24k behind. This is not a good feeling. I think if this guy had ace king, he would think a little longer about what he was gonna four bet. And I think he would be a little more worried about me and maybe just call sometimes. Like I said, he was playing pretty straightforward and passive straightforward. So it wasn't like he was getting after some of these, these other pots. I was not feeling comfortable. And I know I was saying I was gonna take the more aggressive route, but I think in this spot, this was just not the spot. I ended up folding. And what do you know, Dos Equis calls the 9700. <laughs> they see a flop, it's King 10X. And when it checks to the hijack, he rips it in. Dos Equis folds. And I was so happy to see hijack whip over black aces. <laughs> so it was a good fold with the queens. We finally had some momentum going that round. We pick up pocket aces, three bet, get called. See about the flop, get called, jam the turn for a little less in pot and get a fold. There was a couple of other pots. We got some bluffs through, semi bluffs through. And one of those bluffs, the hijack opened to 1400 at 300, 500 big blind. We have eight, four of diamonds in the big blind and we defend. The flop is king nine, nine with two diamonds. We check and hijack bets 1100, a little less than a third of the pot. We make the call on the turn. It brings a six of hearts and hijack checks back. The river brings a king of clubs. So now it's a double paired board. We have eight high. Once the guy checks back turn, yeah, he could have pot controlled the king, but I think more likely than not, he would have fired the turn and maybe check back river if he was trying to pot control just to get value from the draws in the turn and then check it back on the river. So I don't really think he has a king. I'm just sitting here with eight high, missed diamonds. And we certainly have all the King X ourselves that play this way. Went in with the pep talk of, hey, if my brain has a plan to do something, my hand and my body are gonna follow suit. So I pick up some chips. I bet a little over pot, I bet 6K into 5,800. And he thinks for a very, very long time. And then he folds. And I gotta say, it felt a lot better to pull the trigger than it did to just give up. We were building up a pretty decent stack. I think we had about 50 big blinds uh, before this hand happened. This guy was playing really well. Opens low jack, I believe, to 1700. I peeled a big blind with five four of diamonds. I think we both have about 28K. The flop is seven six deuce rainbow with a diamond. 
I check, he bets 1500. I call. The turn is a six of diamonds. So now we have an open-ended straight flush draw and the six is typically better for me. I can't win with five high at showdown and I lead 5,500. He thinks for a little bit, he makes the call. The river is an offsuit queen. So all of our outs don't get there. I gotta go for it. This is the exact spot we were talking about before the day. So I did it. I loaded up and put maximum pressure. I jammed all in. He had about 19K to start the street. We put him in the tank for a bit. He thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, kind of closed his eyes and tossed in a chip. And it was devastating to see him finally do that. But proudly turn over our 5-4 diamonds as the guy next to me uh, guesses that I have a 6. Our opponent had ace-queen. So he rivered one of the best hands that he could have in that spot and made the correct call. So good play by him. We got short after that, jammed a couple of times, and in the last hand we pick up king-queen suited. After the blinds go up, we have about six blinds. We jam and get called by the big blind with ace-10 off. We lose the all-in. All right, well, we accomplished our goal of going out in a blaze of glory. Actually, I was going to say it didn't feel that great, but it really did. That is the first half of a, the first week of my World Series. Three tournaments, three bust outs, no caches, but I feel like I'm starting to get into the groove of things. I'm starting to feel like the cobwebs have been dusted off and I'm just ready to fight for pots, be aggressive, and earn my chips. Whereas maybe before I was being a little bit timid. So I'm glad that that's come around. We're ready for the rest of the series. So that's it for this one, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And to all of you guys who sent me messages for vlog number one, I was overwhelmed with gratitude this weekend. I hired my little sister to do all the editing and graphics. She's doing a wonderful job with her and her team. If you like all of that stuff, I put the name of their production company in the description below. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more bluffing, if you wanna see me make it to day two, you know, shake things up at the poker table and get away with some stuff that I'm definitely not supposed to be getting away with in certain hands. Tell me what you wanna see in the future. I can't wait to see you guys for the next one. Take care and good luck at the tables, everybody.